Hello, my name is Jeff Hyatt and I teach inorganic and materials chemistry at the University of Leeds. Today I've been asked the question, how is electronegativity measured and does it have any units? Now electronegativity is a concept first devised by the American chemist Linus Pauling and defined by him as the power of an atom in a molecule to attract electrons towards itself. This is the idea that in a covalent bond the electrons are only shared exactly equally when the two atoms are the same, such as in a fluorine-fluorine bond or a carbon-carbon bond. If the bond is heteroatomic, that means it contains two different types of atom, then the bond will be polar to some extent, with one atom having a greater share of the electrons than the other. Pauling devised electronegativity as a measure of this. As this is not a fundamental atomic property, but a property of atoms in molecules, he was able to derive an arbitrary scale which was unitless and with the most electronegative element, fluorine, taking a value of 4. In order to come up with his scale, Pauling used thermodynamic data. If we consider a heteroatomic bond, for example the HF bond, which has a bond strength of 565 kilojoules per mole, we find that the bond strength is much higher than either the HH bond at 436 kilojoules per mole or the FF bond at a mere 155 kilojoules per mole. This is in fact common. If we consider the triple bond of carbon monoxide, this is much stronger than the similar triple bond in, in dinitrogen. And it can be reasoned that the polar bond, formed by the two different atoms, leads to a small buildup of charge. In this case, a delta negative on the fluorine atom and a delta positive on the hydrogen atom. This slight ionic character can then can be considered as causing a further additional electrostatic attraction on top of the covalent bond strength, and therefore causing an, an increase in overall bond strength. Pauling reasoned that the difference in bond strength for a heteroatomic bond, the AB bond, and the average value for the AA and BB bond must be due to ionic contributions. And this would be then proportional to the electronegativity difference. So if we use these values for the HF bond, again we can see that the average value for HH and FF is only 296 kilojoules per mole. The actual HF bond is 269 kilojoules per mole stronger. And this Pauling attributes to the ionic contribution. He then scaled this using the following formula. If we consider the HH bond, it has a bond strength of 436 kilojoules per mole, whereas the fluorine-fluorine bond is only 155 kilojoules per mole. The average of these two is 296 kilojoules per mole. Now you can see that is much, much less than the HF bond, the heteroatomic bond, at 565. So Pauling reasoned that this difference between 296, the average of the HH and the FF, and the actual HF value of 565, must be due to the ionic contribution caused by the difference in electronegativity. He then generated his electronegativity values by taking the difference between the true value and the average of the homoatomics, which is a value of 269 kilojoules per mole, and put it into this formula. So this is the difference between the true value and the average, and this is delta E in this term. He took the square root of this, multiply it by this constant, 0 0.102, and this gives you the delta electronegativity value, the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms. Taking these values for the HF bond and putting them into this formula, we get an electronegativity difference of 1.7, which taking the defined value of 4 for fluorine gives an electronegativity value for hydrogen of 2.3. By repeating this procedure with a large number of bond enthalpy values, an average for hydrogen is found of 2.2. And a similar procedure uh, allows values for the rest of the elements to be determined. A number of alternative methods for determining electronegativity have been developed by other researchers, although these are often rescaled to the comparable and now familiar Pauling scale with approximately a range of 0.5 to 4. One example is the Mulliken Jaffe scale. These researchers decided to make the use of fundamental atomic properties to determine electronegativity rather than the bond enthalpies favoured by Pauling. They suggested that the electronegativity could be equated to the average of the ionisation energy, the energy required to remove an electron from an atom, and the electron affinity, the electron given out when an electron is added to an atom. So an atom with a low ionisation energy 
and with a low electron affinity would readily give up electrons and have a low electronegativity. In the same way, a large ionisation energy and a large electron affinity would lead to an atom with a high electronegativity. The only slight complication is again we're concerned with atoms in molecules rather than isolated in the gas phase. And therefore the values of ionisation energy and electron affinity are those of the atom in the valence state, the electron configuration which the atom is found in the molecule rather than its ground state. As such, the more familiar gas phase values need to be adjusted slightly. Nonetheless, the Nullick and Jaffe values will have natural units of kilojoules per mole, being based on ionisation energies and electron affinities. However, these values are rescaled to the Pauling 1 to 4 unitless system to give similar and comparable values in a familiar scale. So in conclusion, the concept of electronegativity is an extremely useful one, allowing us to predict the extent of ionic character in a polar covalent bond and the direction of that polarity, i.e. which atom carries the negative charge and which the positive.